Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today we're going to take a look at creating your own promises using JavaScript. Okay, so for those of you who aren't too familiar or too comfortable with promises, um, after watching this video and making your own promises, I guarantee you everything will start to make a lot more sense. Okay, so we're going to see three examples here. Um, the first one is going to be using a promise to divide some numbers. Um, the second one is going to be wrapping um, the set timeout function um, inside a promise. Okay, and the third one is going to be connecting to a MySQL database using a promise. Okay, so let's see the first example of division right here. So I've got this index.js um, file. Um, I'm using Node here. Okay, so let's begin by defining a new function called divide which takes in two arguments which will be two numbers a and b we're going to return a divided by b pretty straightforward okay so now if i was to say console.log divide and say 10 and then 2 we should see 10 divided by 2 which equals 5. so i can save this and run this script and we get 5 right there okay so let's convert this into a promise all right so basically um, once it's converted we want to do this we want to say divide and then 10 and then 2 um, just like before but this time we're going to say dot then okay and take in the function here which contains the result as the first parameter and we'll say console.log uh, division success I'm going to take in here or just pass in the result as that right there okay so this example doesn't really require promises because it's not asynchronous but it's just a basic example of how promises actually work okay so once the then is done we can say dot catch once again uh, you know which has a function and you pass in the error through here all right we can say console.log there was an error with the division okay and then we can just simply uh, once again log out the error itself so this is the basic syntax of um, the use of a promise okay so we have the then here for those of you who don't know basically we are dividing 10 by 2 and then if that was successful we're going to run this right here which logs out the results which will be 5 in this case and if there was an error we're going to run this right here which says there was an error and prints out the error to the console okay so let's convert this function right here so it's compatible with the below syntax down here okay so inside here we're going to start by returning a new instance of a promise okay so we're going to say return a new promise all right the promise constructor accepts a function so we're going to pass a function inside here this will have two arguments or two parameters resolve and reject so just keep in mind here this resolve and reject these are just two references to different functions so the resolve is going to be um, the function inside the then when you're using it and the reject is going to be what's inside the catch it's as simple as that okay so basically how it works is inside this function you want to actually call these two functions when appropriate okay so for division we're going to simply say resolve okay and pass in um, a divided by b so we're going to call the resolve function and pass in the result of a divided by b which in this case right here it's going to be that right there okay so now if I was to save this and run this script, we get division success number five. Perfect. Okay. So for the rejection, um, we're currently not using it. Okay. So um, if you divide by zero, then there's an error. Okay. So you can't divide by zero. So let's use the reject function here um, to handle the instance of dividing by zero. Okay. So um, let's push this down and say if b equals zero then we're going to reject and pass in the reasoning or the error okay 
we're going to say you cannot divide by 0. Okay? And then you want to actually return. So returning here is going to exit this function right here because you don't want the code below here to continue running if there was an error. It doesn't make sense, right? So we're going to return to early exit out of this function. All right? So now if I was to change this to 10 divided by 0, I can save this and refresh or run this code and we get there was an error. You cannot divide by 0. Okay, so that is the basic um, workings or inner workings of a promise. It's as simple as that, okay? But you might want to actually um, reject and pass in a instance of a error. Okay, so instead of passing in a string here, we're going to say a new error, okay? This will accept an argument with the message. So we'll say you cannot divide by zero. Okay, so that's a different way of actually dealing with the errors. Um, if I was to run this, then we get the full-on error object with the entire stack trace. So it might be a better way of dealing with your with your catch and your errors when using your own custom defined promises. Okay, so that is the basics of making your own promise. Let's now see how we can actually wrap a old school callback style function inside a promise. Okay, so let's get rid of all this and define a new function called wait. So um, we're gonna be able to wait a certain number of milliseconds and then perform an action. So we're going to use the set timeout function inside the promise. Okay, so um, let's see an example real quick of actually using um, the function. So we're going to say wait, okay, wait for 1000 milliseconds. Then we're going to run this function here and we'll say console.log. Uh, we have waited one second. Okay, so if something went wrong, then we'll say catch. Uh, accepting the error okay and we'll say log there was an error and we can uh, simply just say error dot message okay so I'll explain this stuff real soon but basically this is the usage of our wait function which will be defined up here so we can see here uh, we have wait once you're done it's gonna log this out if there was an error, then print out that right there. So this error.message um, is because this is an error object like this one down here. So the message is a property of the error object. Okay, so let's define this function up here. So we'll say function, call it wait. This will accept the millisecond, so ms. Okay, inside here, we're going to return once again a new promise which takes in the resolve and reject just like normal. Okay, and inside here, we perform the main logic. So let's make a call to the set timeout function, which is, you know, found in a regular JavaScript, you know, just regular JavaScript, right? And we can once again, or just pass in the function here as a normal callback function. So this right here is the regular usage of the set timeout function as per normal. Okay, so inside this function, we're going to call the resolve, all right? So now, down here, we can pass the milliseconds into the set timeout function. We'll say ms down here. So we're, we're calling set timeout. We're passing in the 1000 through here. And once that time is, uh, has, you know, has been delayed, we're going to call the resolve um, function, okay? So I can just uh, save this and run the script. We waited one second, and then it says we've waited one second. Okay, so there we have that right there. We've wrapped a traditional callback style function inside a promise. Now for the reject, we can simply say, well, if your millisecond is less than or equal to zero, then we can just um, reject, pass in a new error, and we'll say um, cannot wait um, zero seconds or less than zero, just you know, for example, okay? And we can just once again return to early exit this function right here, 
All right, so I can once I can, I can just pass in here negative 10, save this and run this code, and we get there was an error. I cannot wait zero seconds or less than zero. So that is how to actually wrap a normal callback style function inside a promise. Okay, cool. So now let's look at the third example, more of a real life example of um, connecting to a MySQL database using a promise. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the normal way of um, connecting to the database. So we're going to use the MySQL package from npm. We'll say const MySQL is equal to require MySQL. Okay, so um, this has a method called uh, create connection which sets up your connection to the database. Okay, so we're going to say const um, connection is equal to mysql dot connection. Sorry, uh, create connection. Okay, so that's a method, right? So this accepts a connection config. Um, inside here, we're going to pass in some connection details to my currently running mysql database server. So we'll say host as a local host. We have user, which is root. We have password, which is uh, blank for now. And we have database as chat room. So chat room is a real database inside my MySQL server, which is running right now. Okay, so we've got this. We can now actually try to connect to it using the connection dot connect method. So this connect method takes in one of those um, old school callback functions. Okay, so we're going to pass the callback function inside here. Um, this takes in the error. Okay, uh, argument here. So this is an asynchronous um, action. Okay, it's going to try to connect to the database. Um, if there was an error, then we're just going to say console.log there was an error. Okay, if not, then we'll just say console.log connection successful. Okay, so now I'm just going to save this and run this script and we get connection successful. We also just want to um, end the connection, so we'll just say connection.end. That will just stop um, or prevent the program from um, running non-stop okay so we have here our connection details to the database and then we are trying to connect to it asynchronously okay if there was an error then print this out otherwise just say yep it's successful and then end the connection straight away i'll just change the host to local s host um, to cause this to run um, I might also just return out of here, okay? So now I can just say, once again, run this script, and we get, very soon, there was an error. Okay, so that's the normal functionality of the callback style function. So let's convert this right here into a promise. So let's define a new function. This will be called connect to database, and you guessed it, it's gonna return a promise. Okay, it'll take in our config object. All right, so all our details, host, username, password, database. Okay, so inside here, we're gonna return a new promise. Once again, accepting the function here of resolve and reject. All right, inside here, we're gonna create the connection object just first up. So we'll say const connection is equal to mysql.createConnection accepting the config object from up here. Okay, so uh, same as before. All right, and now down here, I'm gonna say connection.connect. So once again, wrapping the old school callback style function inside the promise. For the callback, we're gonna once again take the error object in. All right, and down here, we're gonna say if there was an error, this time we're gonna reject and pass in the entire error object as per normal. All right, and then return. Okay, and down here, we are now going to resolve and pass in the connection object to the resolve. So 
um, with this MySQL package, once you've actually got the connection, you can then run your queries off the connection. So I'm just passing in here um, the connection to the resolve function. So now we have this defined, we can then use this down here with a promise like syntax. So we'll say connect to database and we can pass in here our config. So once again, we'll say host as local host. Uh, the user is going to be root. The password will be empty and the database is going to be chat root. All right. So we can now say then accept the function. This will um, give you the connection object, as I said. So we'll say um, can right here. All right. And as the catch, we take in the error. Okay. Inside the catch, we'll say console.log. There was an error connecting to the database. And we can just print out the message. So we'll say log uh, error.message. Okay. And up here, we can now say console.log uh, connection successful. And we can once again just end the connection to prevent the program from running indefinitely. Okay, so that is our completed usage of the promise. So I can uh, run this script and we get connection successful. Perfect. I can now once again change this to local s host, save this and run the script. And we get right here, there was an error, um, local host not found. Okay, so that right there is creating your own promises using JavaScript. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.